All right, time to continue on to more of a uh, American Nightmare. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring everybody up to speed here because. Oh no! Wait, here we go. I guess I don't have to get you guys too far ahead here. Well, this should be perfectly safe. Yes, yes, especially considering you're inside a cave and uh, oh, nothing out of the ordinary. <clears throat> now I just need her to charge the sun. Out of my way, you little buggers. Here comes a swarm of them. How lovely. You know, you would think for a bunch of spiders you could just run over them with your feet. And why am I stuck? There we go. Is it?
<clears throat> Unsettling to say the least. Night Springs doesn't exist. It's a fictional town from the TV show I used to work on. It was any place USA, a place we used as a backdrop for whatever strange story we had that week. One of the stories I wrote for the show involved a man, the champion of light, fighting his evil double, the herald of darkness. It was something I'd written back in the real world, something I had a link to, a framework I could build on. I had adapted it into a new story, this story. charge it here try not to get killed okay I'm gonna take care of this try to stay calm look what if I just what if you stay here with me please I'm sorry but if I don't deal with this no one else will Ugh, yeah I guess it's just that this is getting really creepy I believe this is real but I don't understand any of it I'm getting scared I can't believe you're so calm. I get scared, but I've had a lot of time to get used to it. That helps. The guy who looks like me is the reason this is happening. I caught up with him, but he swept me back here. Back in time? Yeah, it's a trap. We'll be doing this forever unless I can break out of it. How are you gonna do that? I'm working on it. I came prepared, but things got kind of scrambled when I arrived. I'm tracking down the things I need. Yeah, well, feel free to climb back into your DeLorean or whatever it is you do. Uh, wrong, uh, wrong fictional setting there, lady. This is Alan Wake, not Back to the Future. ready to run. Here we go again.
in trouble. Better hurry. the motel master key i work for the same company you know um what's at the motel well there's a dead guy he's got something i need to get into the mount red tooth observatory god that's awful hey um i wanted to know about the guy who looked like you didn't the last time you said he had a party but you didn't go i no that's not true i did go it was really great at first and and then I didn't see it myself, but I hear he turned nasty. He hurt a bunch of guys pretty bad, and there was this girl, he... she died. But I didn't hear about that until afterwards. I thought that he was so charming. And then he went to the diner. That's... that's right. I wasn't involved. I wasn't involved with that at all. I don't know what happened. Fine. I need to check out these motel rooms. In the meantime, you stay here, okay? I'm serious. Keep the lights on and stay here. Yeah, okay. You got it. I sure hope you're right about this. You're gonna stay here this time, right? Because the last time I didn't and that thing, whatever it is, happened to me. Yeah. I don't want you to get hurt again. Don't worry. I'm gonna stay put. I don't remember what happened exactly, but I learned my lesson. Good. It doesn't have to happen exactly the same way this time around. You proved that much when you went out and got those things for me. I think you're gonna be okay. Let's hope you're right. Wife and my best friend are easily the two most important people in my life, and they've never really gotten along with each other. I suppose both of them resent the other's intrusions into what they considered their domain. After I was gone, they maintained an uneasy truce. My book stayed in print, still selling, the licensing machine churned away. She was my wife and controlled the intellectual property. He was my agent and took care of the business. I wish they found more common ground than that.
It's said that nobody knows what the future might bring, but for <coughs> this man, it's no longer entirely true. A weaker man might simply give up, but the champion of light is an expert on destiny. Sometimes the puppet and puppeteer can be one and the same. Now we're back to the observatory again. Mount Redtooth, its top littered with man-made eyes that stare into the endless depths of space. Tonight, the champion of light will depend <coughs> on them to pick out a message from the ether. As history repeats itself, the man remembers the patterns. He knows that he needs the missing part for the telescope. I better find Dr. Meadows' car. That's where the camera should be. in the projection booth at the drive-in was charged. Almost unreal. Despite that, the air felt cool and refreshing this late at night. It had been a hot day. The summer was nearing its end. But it wasn't over yet. There are places where our world is <coughs> one thing, and another reality brushes against ours. One such site is Cauldron Lake near Bright Falls, Washington. But there are others. That other reality is dark, vast, and malleable, always in flux. In its depths dwell vast forces and alien energies. They're dangerous. But in one of these places, if you know how, you can channel the power of that place and use it to shape reality.
darkness rose from the depths of Cauldron Lake and took Alice. It needed words. It needed me to write its way into our world. She was leverage, a hostage. I complied, but with a twist. I put in a loophole that gave me a chance to fight back. I was hunted by shadowy enemies, but I faced the darkness. I fought it with light. I drove it back. I saved Alice, but it came with a cost. I was trapped in the dark place below Cauldron Lake. Stories come naturally to us. We can't help it. There are many different worlds, many competing realities within our heads, fueled by books, television, even barely remembered childhood tales. There's an endless supply of fictional concepts more familiar to us than anything or anyone real. We have a far greater connection to the fictional characters we know and love than the random people we pass on the street. Our destinies and inspirations are shaped by lies, myths, and fables. It's you. How dare you? No, wait. It isn't you, is it? I... I suppose you'd better come in. I'll... I'll unlock the door. Thanks! I know what you're thinking. Evil twin, supernatural powers. But most of the time, I just like to keep things basic. I want you to understand that. Like this. Need to get your hands dirty? No batteries, no moving parts, just physics. That's technology you can depend on. It's a classic. Speaking of classics, you need to be careful with this one, though. If the victim suddenly twists, you might end up cutting yourself. It's not really a workhorse, but I'm a sucker for this style. I think that's a switchblade. Now this is more like it. You've got slip-resistant grip. Believe me, you really want that traction once you're wrist deep in somebody. The blade's stiff enough so it won't open by accident in your pocket, but it's still really easy to open with just one hand. Now that's a big thing for me. I know what you're thinking. It's too big, too heavy. But sometimes you just need the extra oomph. If you're talking intimidation, this is going to do the job. Also great for dismemberings and whatnot. You know, the messy jobs. Ah, I can't tell you how many things I've MacGyvered with this stuff. Okay, now, guns. Not a big fan. 
I mean, how are you supposed to really connect with somebody with a bullet? I want you to understand that. I take pride in what I do. We can't both be pointless acts, <clears throat> can we? like this has all happened before. I have the replacement part for your telescope, Doctor. I... all right. Um, let's get it installed. System. Yes, that's right. I remember. All right, let me think. If they're sabotaging it, they'll be at the primary coolant pipe outside. If you can secure it, we should be ready to pick up the signal. That is why you're here, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'll take care of it. Before you go, if you have the time, I'd appreciate if you came up here and explained a few things. All of this is very strange to me. Strange isn't the word I'm thinking of. <clears throat> it's more like deja vu. Taken may well be the tool the darkness favors over any other. At some point, they used to be human, but whatever humanity they once had is long gone. Now they're just shells covered and filled by darkness. The Taken Mr. throws at me are more grotesque and varied than the ones I first encountered in Bright Falls. But I know how to deal with them. I'd be lying if I said they don't frighten me. But I've survived worse. I can't let them stop me. After my disappearance, they thought I was dead. I might as well have been. I know it's been two years. I know Alice has moved on. I've tried to find a way back to her, back to my life, but escaping the dark place is almost impossible. Time does strange things here, but dreams and radio signals can pierce the veil between the worlds. I catch glimpses and echoes of the world. Sometimes I send messages out. I can only pray that they hear them.
right, am I correct? You should be able to turn on the light to the area that way. I think we're good to go. All right, I'll start looking for the signal. Please, head back. Really gonna start getting real. I guess they didn't like that. The signal? Yes, I don't think it's quite the same thing we had um, the last time. Still, we're definitely picking it up. Are we getting the complete signal now? I'm afraid not. Take a look at it yourself. I'm printing out a hard copy now. I'd like to ask you a question or two before that, though, if you don't mind. What's on your mind, Doctor? Most people would find these events extremely disturbing, provided that they survive these creatures, that is. You seem to be quite adept at dealing with the situation. Why is that? Yes. I was involved in... It's a complex story. I was in this small town, and a horrible thing from another dimension kidnapped my wife and manipulated me into writing this horror story that came true. I learned to fight it with light, and I managed to contain it and free my wife. But I was trapped in its world. Are you serious? Absolutely. So, I'm used to reality working in strange or even impossible ways. And I fought these things, not exactly like this, but close enough for a good while now. Of course, I have certain advantages. Was there anything else? What did you mean when you said you have advantages? At the risk of sounding like a lunatic, reality is much more fluid than people think. It can be influenced. I didn't take you for a mystic. I'm not. 
I'm a writer. And under certain conditions, I can, for lack of a better word, rewrite reality. Change things. That's absurd. But it works. Assuming I believe this, why don't you simply, I don't know, write yourself some superpowers? It's not quite that simple. You need to follow certain laws of drama, I suppose. You need to think about consistency and symbolism. Often what you write isn't anywhere near as important as what you imply. There are things out there that will take advantage of your mistakes. You really believe in this? Don't look at me like that. You've experienced some of this yourself. I will gladly admit that something exceedingly strange is going on. But this idea that you're somehow altering reality with your writing is ridiculous. You're essentially saying you're controlling my actions. Leaving aside the rational arguments against this, what gives you the right? Well, it's more like having a destiny. A path you're on. You're not aware of it, but there it is. If somebody changes it, what difference does it make? It's what every writer does. If you write something that affects one of the characters, they don't really know about that. I'm not a character. Are you saying that it's all right to take advantage of someone if they aren't aware of it? Look, all I meant was that if you're genuinely making all your own decisions, and those decisions lead to whatever destiny you have, what practical difference does it make? I suppose that depends on whether our destinies are determined by things like physics and probabilities, or natural reality, which is presumably neutral and impartial, or by some kind of an intelligence. If it's the latter, that intelligence makes choices based on some criteria. If we suffer as a result of those choices, there's a moral and ethical element involved, regardless of whether we're aware of its manipulations. Wouldn't you agree? I... You're taking this very well. I thought you'd be angry. I suppose I would be if I thought you could actually do this. Another printout. Another signal fragment. The message is still not complete, but it's another piece of the weapon he has built against his adversary. Mere words on a piece of paper, but in the right hands, they will hold back the darkness. Now we're back to the drive-in theater again. <clears throat> Last time the man came to the drive-in, it did not end well. He hopes to avoid that fate this time. He hopes that what he has brought with him to this place is enough. Ugh. Serena's probably out of her mind again, but I'm gonna need that key so I can get the power back on. To change the world, you must craft a blueprint for the new reality. Any work of art will do, as long as it's a genuine act of creation. That's what the energies of the dark place respond to. The results may be subtle and perplexing, or far-ranging and momentous. My area of expertise, the written word, gives much more precise results than music or interpretive dance would, for instance. But words can be extremely dangerous. What you define may become reality but so can that which you imply, even if you don't realize you're doing so. You again? I'm really just here to get the keys so I can get the power back on. You wanna hold me down? It's okay. I know you like that. Yeah, I'll just grab the keys. I could be like your wife, little wifey. Waiting at home for hubby. Or you could be the mailman. Or the neighbor. I'm already married to someone who isn't crazy, thanks. I'm just gonna go and get the power back on. Aww. Look, I may or may not be back. I have the access code to the booth already, so once the power is on... You should totally come see me. We could have fun. You know. We'll see how it goes. You should sit down or something. Try to stay calm. I don't want to be calm. I want to be nasty. I want to be nasty with you. Yeah. Okay. You could do anything you want. You can use my... Let's not even go there. 
I was hoping that you'd remember more, but I guess that was too much to ask. I was about to do the weather, but uh, I see we have a caller. Uh, hey, you're on the air with Eddie. What's up? Hey, Eddie, it's Ricky. You talked about fate before. You think about that a lot? Not a lot, to be honest, but uh, I take it you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any conclusions you'd care to share, uh, Ricky? Well, we've got free will, right? That's in the Bible and everything. Yeah, right, sure. So free will, right? Am I right? I mean, if we can do what we want, how can there be fate? I mean, you don't know what's going to happen next. So there's no fate. There's just people doing stuff. Well, I don't know, Ricky. I don't suppose you have considered the possibility that we're all here in the service of a greater purpose. Incomprehensible to us. And what we take to be freedom is nothing more than the move of a pawn on some cosmic chessboard. Limited in scope, subject to the whim of unseen players. Existing only for their entertainment. Or perhaps we're just a tweet reflection of actual events that can happen elsewhere. Could it be that such is life? In Night Springs. Um, dude, what? Food for thought, Ricky. Food for thought. Are you getting it yet, genius? It's obvious that for all his power, Mr. S is an agent of another greater being. The dark place he came from is full of terrible alien intelligences, dark presences, and none of them should be let loose in our world. He serves one of them. He'll open the way for them if I don't stop him. But he'll do more. He'll take over my life. He already has my face. He already uses my name. He'll become Alan Wake in every way imaginable and corrupt everything unless I can stop him.
this. Just look at her. She's really beautiful, isn't she? Your wife. Well, our wife, really. Just my wife soon. Don't worry. I'm not gonna treat her like the others. She's special. If I wanted her dead, she would be. I've been around for a while now. So talented. You haven't seen your new work, of course. Oh, it takes my breath away. Really, she's that good. Oh. Did you know that I've got a wedding ring, too? We're that similar. She's seen me a couple times, you know. I've let her catch glimpses. She thinks she's imagining things, of course. She thinks you're dead. It might as well be. I mean, even if you manage to keep surviving, you'll be in my trap forever. So I'll go to her. It'll be an amazing moment. Oh my god. You're alive. I'll be the good, loving husband for as long as I can stand it. She'll love it. <sighs> and then, one day, somehow, it'll happen. Maybe I'll slip up, she spots something, or maybe she just starts running her mouth. And then, I'll do it. It's gonna be sweet. for all the good it'll do you. For Serena Valdivia, 
Burning the midnight oil was more of an exception than a rule. A procrastinator and a perfectionist, she often worked when she wouldn't be disturbed. Tonight was especially important. The film festival would open tomorrow, and there was still so much to sort out. It wasn't that the work hadn't been done. She just didn't feel like she had completely mastered everything yet. The dark place is utterly hostile to human life. It eats at your mind, wants you to succumb to madness. Your own thoughts can turn against you. <clears throat> Every shadow conceals a threat that attacks at the slightest sign of weakness. You're under an endless assault. Every day is a struggle for survival. But I've learned to take care of myself. I focus on Alice, our life together, my need to be with her. That takes me a long way in the dark place. As long as I have my gun and the flashlight, Hey, that was close. Really? Just because I hit shift in time? What a bunch of malarkey. But I don't have to start so far back, so that's good.
tried the three pounds. Well, that certainly helps. itself is about to end at least for him he can feel the dead end rushing towards him but there is time to act <clears throat> incomplete or not he has the weapon I don't have the whole thing but maybe it's enough Cute, aren't you? What are you up to? It's a waste of time, buddy. You should just lie down and die. Let me take over. This is the only thing you've got coming to you. From here to eternity. No matter how many times you come back. folds back on itself. Again, his senses scream as the very impossibility of what is happening assaults them. But the Champion of Light endures. Each time he gets a little closer, each time another detail falls into place. Now, the trap works against the Herald of Darkness. Shit! 
What are you, the King Hillbilly? of Asgard. I still don't quite know what to make of them. I know they used to be rock stars who modeled their stage personas after Norse gods. I know they're old. I know that in their day they fought the darkness as I do. I know they're demented and insane, ravaged by age and self-abuse. But there's something in them, something powerful that took hold when they were touched by the powers beyond. A thing that goes far beyond just stage names. Something godlike. do not expect the warm reception that has already been prepared for them. Saving Emma. I was, I was running. It was in the fall. It was about um, 6 o'clock in the morning. It was the, the sun, was, sun was just coming up. And there's this huge estate right on the Long Island Sound called the Ziegler Estate. And it's, it's, it's monstrous. And it has these old iron gates that have these... They're spiked. Very, very sharp. But it's, uh, I mean, acres and acres of land. And so I'm running, and I'm listening to uh, Tosca, listening to opera. And there's a moment in Tosca where uh, Tosca's about to stab Scarpia, okay? And it's, like, very, very dramatic. And it's, like, they're, like, there's this huge duet. And so I'm, like, I'm running, I'm running, running, and you can see the breath coming, you know, you can see my breath coming. The sun is coming up, and there's this incredible scene happening. And all of a sudden, I come, I, in the distance, I look, I see something that's on the, 
on the fence. And as I'm running up, I realize it's a deer. And the deer has tried to jump over this fence like eight feet, eight feet high, tried to jump over the fence. It landed on top of the, the fence. It caught it in its chest and it slid all the way down. So it opened the, the deer from the chest to all the way down its stomach. And it was still alive. It was flailing, absolutely flailing. And I, just, and I remember just this music and the thing was running and I, 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 I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I absolutely couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I, I, I couldn't get at the deer. It was on the other side. So it's like the idea of like, okay, well, you, you should help the deer, you know, try to put out his mirror. I couldn't get near it. And it was huge. It was gigantic. And so I, I, uh, yeah, and there was like gigantic, gigantic horns. I mean, it was like, it was Doesn't a- Doesn't mean antlers it was a, if it's a deer? It was, it was, a, it was a visual I will never, ever, ever forget. And I just remember as I was running and just these, these flock of crows that were like in the trees just flying, it was the most cinematic, frightening thing I've ever seen. I, I, I just stood there. I stood there until it died, you know, and then just started running home. Getting the Andersons into the recording studio was a struggle and a half. But once they actually picked up the instruments, something happened. They were two old men, and they weren't. They were doddering bags of bone, and they were barely contained power. And there was music. Barry rubbed his hands together. He knew how to pick a winner. Now all they needed was some direction on how to make things a little more modern. Barry had never produced a thing in his life, but he knew what he liked. He knew Balance Slays the Demon was going to be a hit. <clears throat> Is it bad that this time I just went, oh, he's gonna be right along to save my ass? Not as long as I show up, my man. So I've been thinking about Barry. I don't 
don't know what to do about him yet. I mean, I'm not gonna keep him around, that's for sure. Al. Al! Ugh, little parasite. Your best friend. Really? That's the best you can do. I actually kinda like the guy. He's a plucky little butterball. He plays the clown, that's a hard road to take. <laughs> but I don't need him sticking his fat face in my business. <sighs> Did you know he's been hanging out with the sheriff? From that shitty little town? They keep in touch. Barry's about the only guy who insists that you're not dead. How about that? alive for a while <laughs> just to see him go to pieces when I fire his ass <laughs> yeah yeah Emma wasn't sure exactly when the man arrived at the motel. But from what she could tell, the party started almost immediately. It was infectious, spreading from one room to another. He was mercurial, almost as if he was flickering through the scene, telling a joke here, throwing an insult there, oozing sex and violence and excitement. She had never seen someone like this before. He looked at her and smiled, and she felt her heart flutter a little. She knew he was the kind of man mothers warn their daughters about. But she told herself it didn't matter. I think there's another one. Somewhere. I have seen the darkness twist flesh into new shapes before, but encountering these giants is an extremely disturbing experience. It's as if the genre has been switched on me. There's something out of Pulp Fiction. Twice as tall as normal men and stronger than forklifts, their lumbering gait and slow-witted demeanor brings to mind some kind of mean-spirited caricature of a feeble-minded hillbilly. Saving me again. I'd hate to die before I'm scheduled to be murdered. I guess I have you to thank for setting everything up at the oil derrick. Yeah, well, I figured that if we were going to go over this again, we might as well try to be smart about it, huh? I appreciate it. You took a big chance doing that. You okay? What do you think? I've died twice. I remember everything pretty clearly now. You said I was gonna be okay. I don't know what happened. Well, it's not your fault. I think one of those, what did you call them? The, the takers? I think they did something to the power and they got me that way. I'm sorry. I got the keys from the dead guy in that room. And I'm not handing them over until you do something about this. I'm sick of getting killed. Fair enough. You seem calmer now. I tried freaking out. Didn't do much good for me. I guess you get used to the craziest stuff. Good for you. Plus I figured I'd take the edge off, you know? Those herbal supplements are pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah. I wanted to try to explain things to you now since you're calmer, but maybe this isn't the best time after all. 
Oh shit, yeah. Better not get all metaphysical on me now. Seriously, I'm like two sentences away from thinking how we could all be like atoms on God's skin or something. Figments of somebody's imagination? Um, wow. Uh, I'm just gonna try to chill out and not think about that or, or getting murdered or anything, if you're cool with that. Gotcha. Okay. I really don't think they can get to the power now. Thank you. That's a relief. Um, here's the keys that you needed. Thank you. Hey, I have to tell you. At the diner, I, I went there with him. The guy who looks like you, okay? I know I said that I didn't. Yeah, I figured. You wanna talk about what happened at the diner? There was this guy from the observatory, and... He just attacked the poor dude, smashed his face into the tabletop a bunch of times. It was horrible. I... I didn't know that he was gonna do that. I swear. And I just ran. I just left him there. I didn't even try to help. There was nothing you could have done. It's not your fault. Well, he's dead in that motel room now, so excuse me if I feel pretty shitty about it anyway. You shouldn't blame yourself. I just didn't want to get involved. I have this tendency to just drop everything and run i don't think i'm a bad person but i i didn't even call the cops i'm such a coward if you'd called the cops we'd have dead cops he's not human do you understand it's not your fault but i could have tried to stop him believe me if you had you'd be dead you seem to be doing a little better now yeah i guess it just got easier once i got this thing off my chest i just feel so guilty about it Especially because I didn't pick up on any of the warning signs. I just really liked hanging out with him, you know? He was smart and charming and funny and hot. The way you could be, I guess. I guess. What's the deal with this guy anyway? He looks like you, he uses your name. Why does he do this stuff? I'm not sure myself. Maybe he's just evil or my dark half. He does a lot of the stuff I'm trying really hard to get away from. Things that just messed up my life. I guess all those murders don't help either. Yeah, I could do without the murders in the end of the world. Listen, I need to get going. Yeah, go. I think I'm good now. I hope. Good luck. If it all goes well, maybe this is the last time we meet like this. God, wouldn't that be great? Just keep those lights on, okay? The fate of countless individuals hangs in the balance, threatened by the machinations of the Herald of Darkness. And yet, for a moment, the Champion of Light breathes a little easier. 
He has saved one life. For this moment, it is enough. And soon, perhaps, he can put an end to this. Returning to the observatory for what he hopes is the final time, the man feels anticipation and dread in equal measure. Soon, he knows he will have what he needs. Hello, I was expecting you. I've already taken care of the imaging array, but you should still look into securing the primary coolant flow. With some luck, you may be able to light the area before these things even show up. We'll see. Thank you for tuning in for the second part of our interview with Serena Valdivia and award-winning photographer Alice Wake. Now, Alice, we were talking about your husband, Alan Wake. Is that a sore subject for you? Well, a little bit. Of course it is. The way I see it, we had our good times and our bad times, and on the whole, we had a lot of good times. He really made me happy. I don't mind being reminded of it. So you're, uh, you're over him? <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever be that, entirely. I still think about him every day, literally. I still find myself hoping for... Well, sometimes I think I see him just standing somewhere watching me. I think most people who lose someone they love experience things like that. But on the whole, I'm doing all right. Two years is a long time to adjust, and I'm not really the type to wallow in the negative. Well, I know there are a lot of stories about Alan. He seems to have something of a wild streak. Um, that's not really what our show is about, though. Look, all that stuff really gets blown out of proportion. He had his problems, but... It's really frustrating for me, because people like to talk. They love to tell these crazy stories, and they never really knew him at all. Well, the character he created, Alex Casey, is a household name. The book still continues to sell. There's been talk of a TV series, a movie, a video game. It must be nice to know that his work is still being appreciated by so many readers. Yes, of course, but I don't really deal with the business side. I leave that to Alan's agent. Uh, that would be Barry Wheeler. Actually, I just interviewed him. Uh, he's currently in the music business. Mm -hmm. And he's also Alan's best friend. Uh, you two keep in touch. We talk regularly. Like I said, he handles the business side. I think we should talk about her film. Yes, yes, of course, you're right. I'm Eddie Rodman, talking to Alice Wake and Serena Valdivia, and we'll be right back. I believe we're ready to look into the sky. Right there, Doctor.
This act of creation is exhilarating and frightening. Subtext and symbols loom eager to take effect. Causality and consequence become domino chains that stretch into infinity. The more fundamental the change, the more unpredictable the variables become. Reality is too complex to control completely. Ordinary questions become meaningless. Who created who? What is really real? Everything is as real as everything else. You learn to let go of the things you can't control and go with the flow or go insane. The man before Dr. Meadows was handsome and slick. He moved with lazy confidence and didn't bother to pretend that he wasn't staring at her. She didn't mind, at first. Then the man flicked open the knife and shoved her out of the control room so she wouldn't hear the signal, whatever it was. Outside, she pulled her lab coat closed and thought about running. She didn't. She didn't think she'd get very far, not from him. She never was entirely sure why he spared her. just because I hit shift in time. Oh no, I gotta do this all over again. It's incredibly stupid. I know, seriously, that is incredibly stupid.
But at least I don't have to reread them, so that's good. This is what you look like. Does that bother you? I bet it does. I'm not just wearing your face, you know. It goes a lot deeper than that. There's a lot of you and me. All the best parts. At first, I was just an idea. But they kept telling all those stories about you. You already had that rep. And then you disappeared mysteriously. And then the stories about bad, crazy Alan Wake came true. And here I am. That's the best part, isn't it? When that happens, you can always count on Cauldron Lake. <sighs> I'm just as real as you are. the improved version no fears no doubt no weaknesses no self-deception here i don't let anything drag me down uh, 
I know you like I know myself. I know it bothers you that I'm like this. I use your name, crawl my way into your life. But I only do it because I'm better at being you than you ever were. That is just wrong. That was just wrong, man. down to you. I remember our previous encounters very clearly now, but technically, if this really is a loop in time, we've never met before. I don't know why our awareness persists, but it's bloody fascinating. physicists who would give 15 years of their lives for a chance to experience something like this. I'd imagine that being stalked by horrible axe murderers would curb their enthusiasm a little. Clearly you've never met hardcore physicists. I'm glad you're in such good spirits, but... The signal! Yes, it's completed. Finally. If all goes well, this should be the last time we go through the loop. You know, I just realized that I don't have any memory of what happens after you leave. What does that mean? I don't think it means anything. If everything goes well, you just keep going. I don't show up here like this again. No more bad guys. Things go back to normal. Let's hope you're right. I'd love the opportunity to look into this in more detail. Looks like you've accepted the situation. I'm a pragmatist. If this is a delusion, at least my first psychotic episode is anything but boring. Really, Mr. Waite, at the end of the day, I'm a scientist. I love mysteries. I love not knowing. Whatever else this might be, it's absolutely fascinating. I wonder how far this reaches. Is everybody in the world experiencing this? Who knows? I think reality is probably pretty fragile right now. Doctor, I can see you're very enthusiastic about this, 
I'd appreciate a bit of discretion. Are you suggesting that we should suppress this? No. You can do what you like, but I want you to leave me out of it. But surely, with the things you know, the things you've experienced, you can replicate any of these results. We could... Let me be blunt. If you drag me into this, I'll deny everything. I'll lie like my life depended on it. And writers are damn good liars. Word of advice. This is things man was not meant to know territory. You get into this, chances are you'll open up a door into a world of hurt. Believe me, I know. See. In a strange way, he feels at ease. He is armed with his own words, and when the time comes, they will be enough or they will not. For now, he's content to let the currents take him toward the final confrontation. Once more, we return to the drive-in. If he's aware of the absurdity of arming oneself with a few sentences and standing against a power that can pierce time itself, he doesn't show it. The man has his share of weaknesses, perhaps more, but cowardice is not among them.
never getting out of this wake, never! Don't worry, I'll take care of your wife and your life! you're doing, but I'll send you right back to the beginning. What? You think whatever it is you're gonna do is gonna make a difference? This'll end up just like before! There's more to fighting the Taken than just burning away the darkness that protects them. When I'm fighting for my life, I find myself slipping into a state of intense concentration that makes the beam of my flashlight seem more powerful and focused. I used to think it was just my imagination, something brought on by the adrenaline and fear of death. But now I'm not so sure. I've been touched by powers that I can't begin to truly comprehend. And they've left a mark. I'm starting to think this might be a part of it. Well, you've been indisposed, stuck in the darkness. I've been busy. I operate in the shadows, not always literally, you understand? I'm a little more resilient than those I've taken, but I do my best work in the dark. Ugh. And there's so much darkness out there that goes deep. And the things that live in it are fast, big bastards. They don't mind getting a little bit of elbow room. All that chaos and madness, it doesn't really do that much down there. It's like pouring a glass of water into the ocean, right? But up here? Yeah, you can really make an impact. All they need is someone to bring them all the way through. But first, I had to take care of you, you party pooper. You're stuck in an eternal cycle now. The sun's never coming up for you. Everything else? Do my thing in a bit of quality time with Alice. <laughs> That's a little something for me. And I deserve it. Well, it's warm to this right now.
takes care of that. Again, the Champion of Light enters the final trap. The new reality is almost here. All he needs to do is change the details of the scene, push it past the breaking point, and the rest will snap into place. these actual events or merely a dream a memory or a glimpse of what is to come one thing is certain this scene takes place in another time and another place far far away from night spring of the American Nightmare. Um, this has been quite a trip. This is also a really good example of a horror game that, like I've stated before in the very beginning, doesn't need to rely on blood and gore to get the result it wants. And this game is actually a worth looking into if you have a This and the original Alan Wake. <clears throat> I think on that note here, there's really nothing else for me to show, so with that, I'll see you all next time.